Hey everyone, welcome to Off Topic with Darren Wilson. My name is Darren and I will be your host. Now this is part three and the final in the series with my very good friend Candace Keita. If you haven't heard all the good stories from parts one and two yet, you can find them in Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And now, please enjoy part three. Or I always ask, you know, can I please get a copy? Right. And I hunt people down, you know. Do you have any auditions coming up? Well, considering tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I'm so thankful for the holiday, I'm hoping nothing until Monday or Tuesday. Um, and I just have plans of nothing for... It's so nice, because when you audition, we talked about this earlier too, you always kind of have to keep yourself up. And so for the next week, I'm not going to get a spray tan or do my nails or, you know, my hair's a mess right now. I just, I don't care. Yeah, and it's I, horrible. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I love just being able to stop. Right, yeah. Just and, take a step back, recharge the batteries and... Yeah, and just allow that to be. So I'm real thankful because you always have to be ready for an audition. Sometimes you get same day auditions. Mm -hmm. And for ladies, men, you guys are so lucky you just can go. And for ladies, it's, you kind of have to keep yourself you know, ready to just do hair and makeup and get out the door. Well, we kind of try to keep, you know, a, a nice set of clothes and, and yeah. Trunk and so you could get be ready for it as well. Yeah. Our hair is a little, typically a little bit easier to do unless I'm riding my motorcycle, then it's <laughs> helmet hair I have to deal with. But yeah, I mean, they'll be like, Oh, can you be in Santa Monica in two hours for this audition dressed as a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? You're like, I'm 10 miles away. No, I can't be there in two hours. No. And I have to do hair there's and makeup. And yeah, it's just so, so yeah. So I like it when there's a couple of days when you know the industry is down because nobody's in town. Right. And we can just stop. You know, I want to do laundry. I just want that kind of stuff. Right. No, I get it. Yeah. I and not it. have to stress out over, you know, the possibility of somebody calling you. Now you can put them on tape, which is good. And I have two yes. video guys. And I run to these video guys a lot of times and just put the audition on tape. Self-taping auditions is amazing. Yeah. And put them through Actors Access and the through the e EcoCast. Mm -hmm. So I do that now. And that helps a lot because a lot of times I'm just like, boy, I'm just too stressed out. And that works, you know. That makes it easier for the agents and casting directors as well. Yeah, I've almost booked a job through EcoCast, but I didn't. It would have shot on the East Coast. But Doug, is my partner, has actually booked jobs on video and, and gotten them. So they do cast directly off tape now. Yeah, I've, I've done it. I've, I got uh, a small part off doing a self-tape audition. Yeah, tomorrow. I think it's great. And you get to, to re-tape it if you don't like something. Mm -hmm. Whereas normally you're like, thank you so much for coming in today. Was it okay? It was fine. Thank you. <laughs> like they just want to get yeah. through 25 to 30 people yeah. and they give you one chance. The generic, yeah, thank you for coming in. Exactly. It was like, was it okay? Are you sure? Was it? Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, bye. <laughs> you're like, well, what's that for? You just have to shut the door and walk away and, and hope that it was fine and, and not stress out about it. Yeah. Move on to the next one or you just, wait for the callback. Exactly. I always Hope say for the callback. Yeah. I always say when the elevator doors close and you go down the parking structure, get on with your day. Throw the script away. Don't even don't even look at it and try mm -hmm. to rethink what you did and just move on. No, exactly. And I'm like, okay, I'm off to the next one. I got to change in the car or, you know, I'm going to go to the grocery store in the bank. Don't even think about that audition because it's done. There's nothing you can do. Do you have a website where people can see some of your your reel or some of the things you've been in or? Well, I have a website. I don't know if there's video on it or not. Well, there's the IMDb, right? right. And then there's my website, CandiceKeita.com. And, oh, you know what? There's a bunch on YouTube. I'll just send all that stuff to you, Darren. Okay. And, I'll put it all in the show notes. Yeah, because uh, it's it's kind of here and there. I'll try to put the uh, the link for the Christmas episode of Masked Rider. Hey, that's a great idea. In the show notes as well. You know why? Because it's about that time. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, it's, it's so time. apropos. Mm -hmm. That'd be perfect. Did we do a Thanksgiving episode? Remember? Yeah, we did. I, I, it's funny that you mentioned that because we were talking about what I thought was great too was um, Oxfam was the charity that we were bundling clothes in the uh, bundling uh, food in the kitchen for that we were donating the food to um, the charities in that episode. And they said that, that it was more about giving back and paying it forward. So CandiceKeita.com is your website. Mm -hmm. You're on Facebook as well. Well, I don't run that Facebook at all. My friend Tom Burbine does, but okay. you can catch me on Instagram. 
And um, also, a lot of the content that I've been creating for the past few years is on uh, VivaGlamMagazine.com. That's right. A lot of the videos. You do a great job so. hosting the Viva Glam. Oh, thank you. Model, models Talk? Yeah, Models Talk. Models and we talk. also do a lot of um, tutorials for people, a ton of tutorials. Catch the 90s Girl, because the 90s, 90s Girl is a docuseries about uh, women that run this magazine. Um, and that women uh, entrepreneurs that have created, you know, my girlfriend created this magazine out of nothing. And uh, then they branched out and also created the uh, fashion magazine. And it's just talking about these women and, you know, how they go about their daily lives. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I think for other women that are doing startups and you just kind of see the challenges and how it's not, it is not easy. I'll tell you that. That's another thing I learned is just I've been an actor this whole time. You know, actors are loners. We do our own thing. We just go to auditions and we learn our lines and we that's our day, right? Mm -hmm. And to be a part of a business and work in this business model with people, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day, going to business meetings and all that, it's been a completely different experience. Um, not one that I ever thought I'd see myself in, but somehow I got there even though it's not something that I sought out like acting. Here's something that I discovered about you um, in doing a little research. You've written a book. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's the Hottie Handbook. It's, it's uh, about safety in the entertainment industry. And that's another thing. I, I really just need to pursue it because I always say that I wanted to uh, go on to the um, public speaker circuit mm -hmm. to go to universities to talk about uh, to young women about like dorm room safety, safety on campus, um, getting your first apartment, um, all this stuff that I think is really important that nobody talks about. It's very important. It's really important, especially if you're the first time away from your home as a young girl, like maybe 17 or 18 uh, going to school. You know, and I, I wish that I know the stuff that I know now. And so um, I've always thought about going on the speaker circuit to do it, and there's just never enough time. But that's one of the things on the back burner, if I were to say, if I branch away from acting, is uh, that would probably be my, my next step, is to go on to the um, speaker circuit for universities. Where can we find the book? I have it. It's on PDF right now. Uh, it was never published. So, I mean, oh. if people are interested, I do have it completely done on, on PDF. And then if I go and do the Speakers Bureau, that's when I would sell it. It's just points on safety, like travel safety, um, but also not just dorm room. It goes into, like, cyber safety, office uh, safety if you, you work in an office, um, even, like, simple parking lot safety, uh, dating. You know, that's another thing. Online dating is so different these days. You know, you mm -hmm. don't know who you're going to meet up with. That's a whole other topic we could talk about. Oh, we'd go for hours on that. Yeah. And, you know, online, uh, people that try to uh, get a hold of you online, you know, this this type of thing. I think it's just important these days because when we were growing up, it was not an issue. And now it's like it feels like anybody out there can just get a hold of you through your website or God knows I've had so many crazy people try to get a hold of me. I yeah. mean, it just ugh, the 20 years that I've been in this business, I, I can't even tell you how many people I've had to deal with. It's it's overwhelming. I can imagine. And maybe is it more so for ladies than men? Mm. Yeah. You know, because it's just been a barrage of people that are mentally unstable. Yeah, I, I don't have any stalkers that I know of. Right, which is awesome because you're a dude. If you're a lady and you're out there as an actor or a, a, any type of person in the entertainment industry as a newscaster or anything, um, you open yourself up to all these people who think that they're going to have some type of relationship with you. It's weird. It's It's bizarre. Yeah. It makes no sense. It's 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 absolutely preposterous. But in their mind, uh, it's they think an that okay it's plausible. Thing. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense in their mind, which is bizarre. And, and then if they and then if you don't respond in the way that they want you to respond, then they retaliate. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's weird too. It's just it's it's very strange. And and so I, I wanted to talk to young women uh, about you know these types of things because the world has changed so much. Is the book online or? Can you send it to people? Yeah, no, I could it? definitely send it to people. I have a website too. It's thehottiehandbook.com. Okay. And it has a good portion of the book actually on that site. Um, there's actually big chapters of the book that are on that site that you can go to. And uh, there's a big Q&A and the reason why I wrote the book. And, um, you know, that's a whole other uh, website that I can give you the address to. Okay. And all of this information, all her websites and the book will uh, be in the show notes. So check that out. Okay. Tell us something 
that people don't know about you? That don't know about me? Uh, I guess that's a really good question. Um, like, what's what's your favorite sport? What's my favorite sport? You know, I I like everything surrounding sports, but not necessarily the sport in and of itself. I like the cubist approach towards sports is not the sport, but what surrounds it. Uh, I have very fond memories of football because I come from Texas. So football itself is not so much that I'm interested in, but it's uh, the memories of everybody being so happy. Right. So, so the social aspect of it, putting the party together and, and the f- and family the and friends and, having a good time and, and food and, making and memories. Yes. So that's what I associate um, sports with a lot of times, as strange as that sounds, is the memories with people. So it's the cubist a- a- approach to sports. What about you? So it goes to any sport. Just yeah. Well, what's well on football, because I'm from Texas and the, the f- football reigns in Texas. I am more of a motorsports person. That's right. I know. Dirt bikes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I started riding motorcycles when I was about four or five years old and raced motocross for a little while. Never made it to the pro ranks, but I was I was a good novice. And I had fun. Yeah, had you still. Great experiences. And you're a horseman, too. Uh, yeah, not so much. There's no throttle and brakes on a horse. Yeah, so no, that's true. <laughs> They're a little bit unpredictable. I can I can get out there and enjoy it, but I prefer the uh, predictability. I, I yeah. Horses, I I because I I worked with horses before, and I just didn't realize how um, skittish they are. They're a lot more skittish than I thought they were. Yeah, they by can nature. be. Mm-hmm. They can be definitely. You have to pay attention. Don't stand behind a horse. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. And don't feed them carrots with your fingers and mm-hmm. put it in the palm of your hand because you they will bite. Eat. <laughs> chomp off a finger. Yeah, no, definitely. But horses are amazing. I'm I'm glad I got to know horses, and I have a, a whole new respect for them. They're an amazing creature. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, oh, definitely. Because I used to see all your Instagram posts of you and horses, and it just reminds me of, you know, being back home in Texas. I'll have to go back to Texas with you one of these days. I know. Texas is a different world than here, I'll tell you that. Yes, it is. It's a huge different, it's like a different country. About the size of most countries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I used to think that was normal. Like, I didn't understand that it was a huge state. I just thought it was Texas, you know? So. so what else? What else you got for us? Anything else brewing in your life? I mean, mainly it's just uh, we're still doing the models talk and still, you know, doing stuff for the magazine um, and then just still, you know, auditioning and, and working. I mean, that people don't realize in, in L.A. it's so exhausting. That's kind of it. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It's like it's I seem like I feel like 724 is towards the industry because it's a self-motivated business. Nobody's going to help you. You really have to have the inertia to move it forward yourself. And um, I always say that's the best piece of advice that I can give anybody who wants to be in the business is don't rely on an agent or a manager or, you know, a publicist or anything. It's like you really have to move that ball forward yourself. And it's pushing it up the uh, up the hill every single day. And a friend of mine said, you know, what are the five things that you did today each and every day for your career? Five things. And you have to do it yourself every single day and list it down on a day timer or whatever the, day, the night before. So you, you have that action plan for you because this is a very action-based right. business. And you really you can't think. You just have to do. You know, don't, don't second-guess it in this business. Just do it. You know, don't think, oh, should I? Should? I hate it when people say, this is a pet peeve. I hate it when people say, oh, well, I can't shoot. Well, I can't see that agent because I have to get my headshots done first. And I can't get my headshots done until I lose weight. And then I have to, it just, it's like, no, just do it. Yeah, don't put it off anymore. If you have an opportunity and somebody's giving you an in with their agent or manager, just go. Go to that meeting. And see what happens and see what they have to say. Because opportunities will pass you by and sometimes you'll never get these opportunities back in this business with people. Like sometimes a person will be only available this one time and if you miss it, that's it. There was this one person, a wonderful person, Andy Waldman, who has done so much for everybody at the magazine and and my friends. And and he owns a a company called Focus Magazine, uh, LA Home Magazine and Focus Television. And my girlfriend introduced him to me. That day, I didn't feel like meeting anybody. So I said to her, uh, I'm not going to meet him. She goes, no, this is your opportunity. 
she grabbed me by the hand. She goes, no, Candace, I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. No, I don't feel like meeting anybody today. I'm so glad I did mm -hmm. because if I didn't, it would have uh, changed the course of so much right. with what we do, even with Models Talk, everything. And I didn't feel like it, which is so stupid. And uh, Sandy Taylor is the actress that introduced me. She goes, no, this is the opportunity. You have to do it now. And she grabbed me by the hand. And I went and met him, and that's how Models Talk and everything got started. So, you know, it's proof positive that in this business, you really have to just grab it. Don't think twice. Just do it. Just do it and grind just no matter what. Don't, yeah, don't second guess yourself. And don't even, I always say, just act, don't think. Okay, I'm just going to do it. I don't need my, uh, another girl we interviewed just this week, she was like, I was living in New York. I came to California for Oscars week. And I said, oh, you know what? I just want to live here now. I'm just going to do it. So she didn't think, and she just did it. And she had somebody send her stuff out, and she just started. And that's how she came out here to be an actress. And she goes, don't think about it. She goes, just do it. Know your goal and just do it. And make it work. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's the best piece of advice I can give. And I, I feel like I can give it now because I've been in this business, this crazy business, for a quarter of a century. In that sense, I feel like I, I have credence to be able to tell somebody who's new. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you've been in here for one or two years, okay, whatever. You've been in this business for 26 freaking years. Then you just say, you just just do it. It's like that Nike ad, as cliche as it sounds, just do it. It's words to live by. Yeah. And don't worry about, you know, your headshots or losing those five extra pounds or you have bad hair on a bad hair day. It doesn't matter. Just go and, you know, be yourself and meet that person uh, or get in that situation or go to that class, you know, or go to that audition. Yeah. You're still, still the same person that you were, even if your hair was done perfectly. The, 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 and they don't know. see it. Yeah, exactly. They'll see, they'll still see you. They'll see you. I mean, there have been auditions where I'm like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know I had an audition today. I have dirty hair. I actually told my agent that. I said, I can't believe you guys are making me go to this last-minute audition because they didn't wash my hair. And it's too late now because I have to be there at 2 o'clock. And they've laughed. And I've gone, even though I didn't feel like myself. But I was like, you know what? Sometimes you just have to go. You know, that happened just recently. I told my, uh, my agent, I said, I'll go. But I didn't expect this. And I feel like I look terrible today, but if you want me to go, and it's casting directors that I've known for 15 years, and they know me. And so I said, okay, I'll go. And sometimes those days work better in an audition. They do, because you don't care. prepared for it. And you let everything yeah. go. So one time I booked a job, I'll never forget, it was for a pilot called Big Happy. And um, I walked in and told the casting director and the client, I said, this is... A last minute audition. I didn't even shave my legs. And I want to get you guys know that. And I got the job. <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. I was like, I'm a mess. I didn't shave my legs, but I'm here. And then I ended up booking the job. What a perfect way to end. Yeah. And I worked <laughs> with the guy. What's his name from The Mummy? Stephen. He passed away, unfortunately. Stephen. The cowboy in The Mummy movies. The guy with the big hat. Anyways, um, I, I played his girlfriend. But, uh, you know, I got that job probably because I was so free. Yeah, it was just like, okay, you guys, I'm here. I'm a mess, but I'm here. So just throw it all out the window and, and run it. Yeah, and just let it go. And and so for anybody in the business, you just have to really wing it sometimes. And whatever, this is a very fast paced city, and just uh, throw it out there and just go with the pace of the city. Yep, that's what you have to do. Exactly. You you have to learn if you're from a small podunk town in the middle of nowhere. You know, get ready for this ride. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. I don't even know what we talked about. We talked about everything. I don't even know. I don't remember. <laughs> it's going to be interesting listening to this. I have no recollection. It's so early in the morning. Three hours of sleep, and I appreciate the fact that you drove all the way up here because I told you, I told Darren, I said, don't do it. I feel bad making you drive up here, but I'm so thankful. Well, from the advice you just gave, I know. if I wouldn't have come, then I know. we wouldn't have recorded this episode, and all these fine people wouldn't have been able to hear your stories. That's true, and I appreciate the fact that you came up, seriously. And you're always on time, and you're always such an on-it person. Seriously. Well, thank you. Yeah. That's a big part in this business. You have to be responsible. People yes. don't like flakes. Yes. Be early, people. Definitely be early. Don't show up on time, because that's late. Exactly. They always say 20 minutes is on time. 20 minutes early is on time to set. If you have to sit in the parking lot for an hour, 
that's better than sitting in traffic and stressing out. Exactly. It's true. And also if they say, you know, you have to park in the extended parking lot, but then they were going to take a shuttle and shuttle you into a set. Allow yourself to know that that may take 20 minutes or longer if the shuttle's coming every 15 minutes. So if you just miss that shuttle, you're going to be late waiting for the next shuttle to come into the parking lot. Think yeah. think ahead of time. Right. Get on the first one. That gives you a chance to regroup and be ready for your day. Exactly. And you go get a cup of coffee because when they say if your call time is 6 a.m., they want you in the chair at 6 a.m. They don't want you arriving on set to your trailer at 6. Right. You better be in the chair with the people that you're supposed to be seeing first at six. So, you know, you really have to think way ahead. And if there's any, like you said, snafu on the traffic here in L.A., you're screwed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you slow everybody else down. And nobody appreciates that on set because everybody wants to just do their job and go home. Yes. They all love their overtime, but they all want to go home, too. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, our set, our days are 12 hours. Typically. And most people, job is eight. So think about it. Like, you know, at the end of the day, people, and you're going to be back on the set at four or five or six in the morning. You, you want to go home to go to bed. Yeah. So if you're pushing somebody's call time to, you know, a 14 hour day or, you know, pushing their call time to later that day and they have a vacation planned for the weekend, blah, 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 all that good stuff. You're making no friends. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, you're costing the production money. a lot yep. of money. And every single person is important no matter what you do. If you're not there, your role is so vital, they can't function without you. And be nice to the crew. Mm -hmm. They are talented. They're professionals. They love their jobs. And they're people, too. Yeah. A, a good morning or a hello first thing in the morning goes a long way. Oh, totally. They're, they're, I. I've always said that the crew is the people that are going to make you look good or not. Cause my cousin works crew and he's always like, we shape the light, you know, we make you look good or not that you better, you know, treat everybody with respect. And the odds are good that they've all worked together for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So they're like a family. Mm -hmm. So you're coming into their house. Yeah. So be respectful. And, always and say, thank you. I always try to, no matter what time it is in the morning, I try to come in with a super positive, happy attitude because nobody wants to see a sourpuss in the morning. And so I always know for hair and makeup and everybody, I try to do that and then keep it going through the whole day because nobody wants to work with somebody who's down because mm -mm. it brings everybody else down. Right. And so even that I always felt in a way there's, um, I understand the way I'm supposed to behave on a set and there's a comfort in that because everybody knows their place. And when I go onto a set, I know the way the day's going to go because I know my place. Right. And and the crew understands that, you know, an actor and actress coming on set, they they have a job to do. They're, they have their lines and their dialogue to run through. So they, they don't bother you. They know your place as well. So if all you can muster is a smile and a hello, then that's great. Yeah. Well, they know, too, though, most crew, because they've been working for so long, that we have so much dialogue to memorize. And sometimes not like we're being uh, not friendly. It's I'm desperately, desperately trying to memorize the material before I go on. Because sometimes there's not enough time each night to memorize. Right. Especially on that show. We have so much dialogue, and you're back every single day. So I was desperately, in between takes, 20-minute setups, looking at the material that I'm about to do. Because I can't remember, because it's just too much volume. So they have to understand. I can't oh, chit chat. Yeah, yeah they, they, they do. Yeah. They definitely understand that part of it. Because then it slows it down for everybody if you can't get your lines down. Right. So it's one big collaboration. Yes. Is, I guess, what I'm trying to get at. Yes, absolutely. I, I remember one time um, my name on a show was uh, Sammy Kim DeVasquez Kamehameha Jones. And I had to say that a lot. And it was at the now I can say it with ease, but at the time it was really hard. Because it was a news reporter. So I'm, you know, Sammy Kim DeVasquez, Kamehameha Jones, you know, back at you, Bob. But saying it was so <laughs> hard for me because uh, I couldn't get the name. So, you know what I mean? So and it's you're hard. you're on camera. Yeah. So plus a huge bit on news on top of that. And then the name sandwiched in there. So I remember thinking, gosh, you know, I, it's not that I don't want to talk to people. I'm, I'm just confused. Right. Yeah. And I'm stressed out. And it's hard for me to remember what I'm supposed to be saying. And then I've done dialogue um, uh, in sign language, and I book jobs, uh, a couple jobs doing sign language. That's even more stressful. That's something 
that people don't know about you. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's You're it. Yeah, fluent. that's a good one. Yeah, that's that's one. I never thought about that. Yeah. So so and I do uh, have book jobs like on VIP and commercials, um, doing sign. But that's even more complicated because then I got to think of the words and I got to sign. So mm-hmm. it's like I can't be talking to everybody. So you you're right. That's multi talented. Everybody's multi talented as long you just have to know them. Well, sign language is learning. Sign language is I've never tried, so I don't know the degree to what it takes to learn it. Um, my mom is, is fluent in sign language, so I oh, have wow, a little that's bit right. of experience uh-huh. with it. But it is a huge talent and a blessing that you know it. I'm just conversational. I mean, like, I'm not the person that could go on and on and on, but I can definitely have conversations with uh, people that are deaf and hard of hearing. And I've worked with deaf and hard of hearing people on sets. Uh, and then I've, you know, just conversed with people out and about. So that that's, you know, I'm confident in that. But as far as, like, you know, maybe the Gettysburg Address or, <laughs> you know, things <laughs> I, uh, that are, like, complicated, I don't know. So, or trying to, you know, figure out physics or chemistry through sign language would be really difficult. <laughs> But it is, it's, it's great that you know it, and I really should spend some time learning it, because it is yeah. valuable. And Well, every, uh, I always say every um, thing that you have, every trick that you have up your sleeve helps you in acting, because I've gotten some jobs because I could, I can juggle too, maybe that's another one people don't know, and uh, I've gotten job, jobs like for Eric, Erickson Cellular Telephone, a commercial for them, because I juggle, and like people don't know, so these little things help you along the way that people don't know that you know you have these little skills how many more than three now i can do three balls but like with tricks and with erickson cellular it was a actual commercial called hands and um they made these big oversized silver balls and they uh, i was downtown and by a big skyscraper building and they had me juggling uh and other people were doing other things with their hands you know so you just never know what will come in handy at a certain time right you know so other people sing and dance. My girlfriend is a professional singer and dancer and has booked so many jobs because she's an actress, but she happens to like really be a theater trained musician. And she was a Laker girl and all that. So, I mean, she books a lot just because not a lot of people can do that. Mm-hmm. So take your acting classes, learn, learn the craft, but also have fun in life and do it, fun it, things. You do, yeah. And you do dirt biking, Yeah, you I know, can. and the, they need people for certain things at certain times. You never know what what your acting will require you to do. Right. Yeah, so it's always good to be well-rounded. That's another thing if anybody was asking me. It's like whatever skills you have, your, your skill set, your own personal skill set, just keep brushing up on it. Right. Well, I think we could go on talking for the rest of the day i know and i've I've got to go out and get those pies i told you last (laughs) night i was like the pie guy because thanksgiving is tomorrow he was like we stopped taking orders because it's been too overwhelming so you just need to come in the morning i was like what so yeah so i'm on a mission to go get pies this morning so this episode will air after thanksgiving so i guess we should say happy holidays to people happy holidays yes and a well early belated happy thanksgiving belated happy thanksgiving and happy new year early Merry Christmas and early Happy New Year. And Happy Kwanzaa and Happy Hanukkah. All of it. All those things. So. Well, thank you again for coming on the show. Oh, thanks, Darren. It was so much fun. It's been a blast. I know. It's I like... look forward to seeing the movie. Oh, excited. When we can go together and we can watch it. Okay. If it's playing in Orange County, you have to drive down there. Okay. You know what? Because you came up, I will totally drive down. How's that? <laughs> Perfect. That's I'll what. Take it. You all heard then, it. Then, yes. Then I feel like it's it's even because you took the time to come up here and you left at five o'clock in the morning. If the movie's playing down there, I will drive down there. Awesome. And that's my word. Well, thank you again. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And definitely check out the show notes and um, follow Candace on uh, her Instagram account, which I'll have her say it again because it's a little bit confusing it's official ck1 but you know what there's some underscores in it yeah i don't know why i did that because now nobody can find it i just need to change it but i'll i'll give it to you okay the link will be in the show notes yeah so everybody i hope you enjoyed the show and i will talk to you soon thank you again for listening to part three and the series of my conversations with candace kita again if you haven't heard parts one and two yet you can find them in apple podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Please subscribe if you like the show and reviewing and leaving a comment will help others to find the show as well. And we would greatly appreciate it. 
You can find links to Candace's website, Instagram, YouTube channel, etc. in the show notes. A big thanks to Mike Roy and his band Go Casual for providing the music. Thank you again for listening to the series with Candace Keita. My name is Darren Wilson. I'll talk to you soon.